He was described as a modern day miracle. For the past seven years, we followed Drew Khan's story as he went from a coma to doing what was thought to be impossible. This weekend, his loved ones will gather for a homegoing celebration. Drew died July 26, just days before his 30th birthday, in what police are now calling a hit and run crash in Jacksonville. It happened seven years after a motorcycle crash almost took his life. Instead of focusing on his death, his mother's choosing to focus on his life and his legacy. Andrew's finishing out cycling. He did his thing. Yes, he did. <laughs> Drew doing his workout. His faith was him living and being committed to his assignment in a broken body. <laughs> Drew Kahn was critically injured in a motorcycle crash in July 2017, leaving him with a traumatic brain injury. Impaled lung, broken ribs, his body was crushed. Yolanda Osborne Kahn remembers doctors describing just how severe her son's injuries were. He's brain dead, he's in bad shape. And then as the hours went on, it became, did we want to donate his organs? And then it became like five doctors saying, you know, you need to sign the DNR, you need to do this because this is not viable. And that's when I took the piece of paper and ripped it in half and said, you're not getting a toenail or an eyelash. This praying mother refused to believe he was brain dead. After months in the hospital, One, two. still in a coma, Drew was sent home. So I asked God for more time, and I didn't know what more time looked like. After 244 days in a coma, Drew woke up at home. His first words? You love me? He was young. He was 22 years old when this happened. So for him not to give up, he could have just said, I don't want to be here. This is my body. I'm out. That's not what he said. Up, 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 chest up, head up, good. With her cheering him on. Let's stand up, one, two, three. Stand up, stand up, stand up. Big step. There you go, man. Good, right. And the help of Brooks Rehab. Strong and step. Drew learned how to walk again. Keep going. This is Drew telling me that he's not wearing his brace anymore. Talk again. <sighs> and live life again. Me and Drew were riding on the tandem this morning. It was a process, but most people didn't see all the processes and the will it took, the determination it took, and the thousands of hours that it took for him to get to that point, even speaking, even being able to feed himself. Hi, everybody. Hi. <laughs> Drew used his story to give others hope and strengthen their faith. What has really taught me is that sometimes the things that we want and the things that we desire, maybe it's not the way we expect it. He lived out this message he shared with us in 2020 before he got his voice back. My story represents never giving up hope. All things are possible when God is in it. I just would love to tell others to never give up. Control the knee coming up. Seven years and one week after his motorcycle accident, the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office says Drew was walking on Collins Road when he was hit by a car that drove away and then a pickup truck driver who stopped and called police. Drew died at the scene. I'm just a proud mom and I'm a proud mom that's at peace. I don't, I don't have any grudges or grievances not even of how he went out, because how he went out is not important. God allowed it to happen. It's really hard to be sad. You know, he's free. And his legacy lives on. Drew's visitation is tomorrow night from 5 to 7 at Zion Grove Baptist Church. That's on Jacksonville's west side. Then his homegoing celebration is Saturday morning at 11 o'clock, and it is open to the public. And here's what we know tonight about that hit and run crash. The Jacksonville Sheriff's Office tells us that the pickup driver who hit Drew called police and is cooperating. But after further investigation, they now believe that another vehicle had hit Drew prior to the truck, and the driver of that vehicle left the scene. 
JSO says this is based on Drew's injuries and witness statements pointing to more than one vehicle being involved. Now they don't have a description of the other vehicle, but they tell me that it likely has damage and it happened sometime before 5:30 a.m. on July 26 on Collins Road near Schindler Drive in Jacksonville. If you have any information that could help investigators find that driver, call the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office.